So as we begin, as you sit comfortably, sit with ease and think that if your arriving on your mat is with asymmetry, that you change the habit. So I'm just simply going to switch which is the leg in front. And that will help me focus on the now. Bring your hands to your heart. Whether it is the new year time or a new practice, it is a new opportunity. And when there is something new to be learned, the very first sutra begins with that word now, atta. Atta yoga anush asuna means now the learning of yoga begins and what we are guided towards is truly to learn about ourselves. So how does the practice open us to that? And in a group class, how does that allow us to appreciate each other? Let us begin. If you will then take your arms behind you and straighten the legs and bring your feet together. Let your fingertips press back if that is possible. If you need the support of blocks underneath your hands, please do that. But I want you to think about your knees so that you'll bend your knees a little bit and then straighten the legs and reach into the inner heels. And every time you reach into the inner heels, you feel this extension of the spine. So we're gonna do this in a fluid way. You can move faster than typical of your breath. So you can make it fluid to bend and extend and really think about how sitting bones are even and how you are what we call in this exercise, pumping the knees. So we'll just wake up that lower quadrant and lend it to uh, extension so that we connect what the lower body does to the willingness of the upper body to open. Let's do that two more times and then continue. Feet are wide now, as wide as your mat, maybe a little bit wider. And if you will, take the arms wide, recognizing that this is the home base and that we're going to turn and aim to the outer edge of the opposite foot with a fold. As you inhale and come upright, exhale, turn in the other direction. And as you look at what your feet are doing, how they are staying, Note that you don't want to turn out or in, but to try and stay neutral. So as you exhale, let momentum and gravity help you. This is part of a pose called Upavista Kanasana, upright cone. And we have many variations on preparations for any pose, but especially for this one. So where we're going with that now, it gave us a chance to create a twist. I want us to take our feet even wider. And if what you find is that the floor is too hard, you can turn sideways on your mat. But this time we're gonna be a little bit more static and I want you to turn, prop the hand behind you, reach to the outer edge of the foot. And the more you reach, the more I want you to really anchor the sitting bone that belongs to that other leg. Just keep sending your energy into the other leg and notice the stretch throughout the body. Inhale and come on up and exhale and switch. So here we have a chance to be static, to be still and to just really feel. What are we asking for? Where is there a give? What is different one side compared to the other where we might need to stay a little longer to make this unique to us, each person. And then inhale and come on up. We're gonna back off to do more. So we're going to bend in one knee and keep that long leg really wide. The idea is to keep the knees wide away from each other. And at first we're gonna to turn toward the bent knee. So we're just gonna simply turn, use the floor, use the fingertips at the floor and keep thinking about the long leg, how we're trying to reach into that long leg, the inner heel. So the amount of twist becomes unique to each person. If we stay a little while, we can allow breath to help us deepen our experience. That means you might feel the give in your body and there might be more twist available. So for me, I'm gonna try to catch hold of that bent knee and then turn that little bit more. The idea is to sit upright, to stay long in the spine and be constantly surprised at what your body will allow you to, right? So now we want to turn in the other direction and make use of a strap. I'm gonna take my strap and catch hold that long leg foot. 
and then take the strap behind me and give it to the opposite hand and try exactly the same thing again, all right? So as you tug, what you'll find is that the shoulder opens up a little bit more. You might feel that your core is involved in that little bit more. I want you to connect how the hand tugs to the push of the foot without overdoing. That means if it's too much on your shoulder, keep it light, keep it light. Twists are a wonderful way to ease into our practice. They help us to release held tension in the spine and the back and just invite more of that a willingness of what happens from the lower to the upper body. Before we give this away, turn your head, look back to the long leg foot and notice how there is more action in the back. Today, our practice is going to be familiar poses using leverage that just helps us access strengthening patterns. Take the time and inhale and come out of it. Before we do the other side, we have one more thing to do. We're gonna go back to feet wide. And this time we're going to turn toward that leg that we have the strap and we'll use the other hand back behind and we'll sit up tall at first. So I want this to be, um, an upright position and to have a little bit more access to a tug, the strengthening. And what you'll find is that you can keep reaching more into that other leg. You can continue to give effort to that lengthening. Keeping that, come and fold. I'm bending my elbow, aiming nose toward the toes, keeping the sitting bones even. And again, this is an opportunity for a strengthening. This is in fact a twist. but a strengthening twist. Some of you will find that naturally you have um, the opportunity to fold deeply. I know that's not for everyone. So if by chance your fold is deep, you most certainly can ignore the strap. You can reach out and catch hold the outer edge of the foot and find how that accentuates all of the actions that are already present. One more breath. As you inhale, come on up. And as you exhale, let's do all of that in the reverse on the other side. So we're gonna simply take the strap and catch hold the other foot. And we'll start upright and we'll sit nice and tall and just feel that strengthening pattern. Nice. Pushing into the back hand, reaching out through the crown of the head and just giving time. We just had a great twist on the other side. So from here, when you're ready, it is a fold. This fold, bending in the elbow, keeping the front spine long, taking the nose toward the toes, it gives us a chance to have these um, cues that really take into account safety tips, that we're not flexing the spine, we're extending instead, and we are pointed towards, you know, what is, what is our own limitation? So that we're not imposing on the body, just constantly surprised what we can do. If your body allows you more, remember, come deeper into your fold. The side does not allow me to catch my foot, so I'm just coming into it a little bit more. Being true to yourself is important. As you inhale, come upright. And as you exhale, it is time to bend that other knee to keep the knees really wide away from each other, to take the strap back behind and to turn toward the bent knee, sitting nice and tall. Mm -hmm. So again, I want you to connect how the arm is tugging and the foot, the leg is actively lengthening. When we think about what we're doing, we can get something more out of what we're asking for, right? So if you will then turn your head and look back to that long leg foot, just feel how there's more engagement in the back of your body. Very nice. This is a pose that we do with great variation. Sometimes we add a side bend to it. We aim to catch the foot with both hands. It sounds far-fetched from this angle, but it is not beyond us and it's not beyond you. 
If you will now let go the strap, we're really working in the reverse. And what we did before was to keep that back hand propping us up and just to notice where we can go. So we're still turned toward the bent knee. The back hand is pushing down into the floor. The front hand can catch the knee possibly or just use the floor. That's how we started. But just to notice what is different between using the strap and not. We want to always remember the lessons of the pose, both sitting bones anchored. So already we've had this lengthening of the midline of the body. And we're gonna take advantage of that as you inhale, come on back and let's trade out the strap for the block. So if you will start simply, think about a narrow block. I wanna take this narrow block and put it between my feet so I'm not losing altogether all of this inner thigh lengthening. I, I get to feel that it's accessible. Hopefully you get to feel that it is accessible. You'll hold on to your feet or your ankles and sit tall. So if we want to think about all the relationships, think about the outer edges of the feet, how they press down into the floor, how the outer edges of the soles of the feet press into the block. And not only do we have more action, but we have a safety net. We have lengthening and strengthening at the same time. We're gonna use this pose. This pose is called Baddha Konasana. It's a bound angle, uh, this, this bound, uh, closed chain, if you will, and we're gonna use it to fold. So if we keep the back fairly straight and think about folding forward, we understand that the limiting factor is in fact these inner thigh muscles. And I don't get very far. Every day is different. But where I would like you to go is to think about the proximity of your elbows to your inner thighs and whether you need to sit more upright or if you need to not hold on to your feet. I want you to think about pressing your elbows down and out as if you're trying to guide those inner thigh muscles to a lengthening down and out and then just notice uh, your body's response more of that action that um, that comes into that holding pattern, you can find a balance between both of those places. Front spine lengthening, collarbone spreading, there's a lot going on here. Right? So we're gonna use the lengthening of this inner line to invite the lengthening of the front line of the body. As you inhale, come upright, and then take the blocks behind you. I'm gonna take mine so that they're low, and they are behind me and place them so that my hands can use the blocks. As you plant your feet, we're not going high. At first, I want you to push into the blocks and then lift the pelvis any amount. And just check out and notice uh, dropping the hips, lifting up. So I wanna drop the hips down. I want to lift back up and we can make it more of a conditioning exercise by repeating. So I'm not asking you to stay long, but I'm asking you to notice how your hips can hang your spine so I can get there and go, I'm not charging my legs yet. So there's a difference. What the difference is the traction. So I get to use the heaviness of the hips to just create space in the spine. And we're using the movement to strengthen the upper body, the back of the shoulders, all right? So this time, if you will, come with a little bit more height, charge the legs. So press into the arms. Your body will tell your feet where to go. I want to lift the pelvis. You can go as high as you wish. But as you get up there, I want you to notice what your head can do. At first, if you'll look ahead and as you need, take a break. So let's come on down just to feel that we're not being asked to do too much too soon. Looking ahead protects the neck if you have a neck issue. So go again and bear into your feet to the inner heels, come as high as you wish to go. And then lift your gaze, meaning lift your chin a little bit and just notice. The front of your neck, those muscles are holding up the weight of your head. You're strengthening probably the counterbalance of looking down a lot. We all tend to do that somewhat through the day and then come on down. So what doesn't happen here is dropping the head back. And the reason I want to share that is because first of all, I don't do that. Secondly, there are as many levels of ability as there are people. And if this is part of your practice, you should know that you don't get to drop your head 
until your sternum is really uh, more elevated, making it safe for your neck and we're all different in our neck. So we're gonna do two more and we're gonna talk about more options, okay? I want to press down into the block and where I want you to play is to notice, do my fingertips point forward? What happens in my shoulders if I turn my fingertips out? What makes a difference to me? Is it better, it is more, a uh, requirement of the shoulder girdle, but is it manageable, right? And so lifting any amount, any amount, and then until we are able to go really high, we are not being invited to drop the head. So at most it would be keeping your neck neutral. And again, that's not for every one or for every day. So I'm trying to make sure that there's a challenge for every level of ability. So we're gonna go one more time. And with that last cue, turning the fingertips back is even more. I have more of an open set of shoulders. And if you start to get there and you're just not happy with it, then please turn the fingertips forward. That is more um, traditional. Okay, so here we go in this pose. And bring your feet together and then take one leg along and bring it back and take the other leg long. Notice the quality of your mind, trying something new, trying something that is more, and the quality of your breath. And then come on down. So we'll transition now to the front body. That was awesome, that was wonderful, everyone. We're gonna take the blocks in front of us, and instead, we're gonna use the blanket underneath our shins. So let's get there. We'll We'll do a little bit of building. So we're not being uh, terribly fancy to get there. Here I am at all fours. The blanket comes in handy to keep the knees safe. But where I want you to go with this at first is to straighten one leg back behind and to play with what the shoulders can do. I want you to drop the rib cage relative to the head of the arms and then to come back up to drop the rib cage down and then to push up. So there's a lot that has to participate through the range of movement in the shoulders, very different from what we might think of as a push up, but it readies the body without overdoing. Take the time and switch. When I take a look at what's really going on here, I'm trying to keep the pelvis neutral, make sure that both legs are on, the legs press back, the shin presses back, and then it's an exploration. I wanna drop the rib cage and then press away. So we are um, affecting what happens in the shoulder blade relative to the rib cage. And this is protraction and retraction of the shoulder, and it just keeps the shoulder girdle healthy. All right, wonderful. From here, let's do something more traditional. Rounding in the spine, cat pose, pushing the floor away, drawing navel to the spine strongly, pressing the shins back, and then coming through neutral and coming into cow. So we have a little bit of a back bend. We get to look ahead. This uh, back bend is unique to each person. And exhaling, going back to cat. If you will now take one leg back and come into neutral spine. We were just here. And if you will take your blocks so that they are a medium height rather than a low height. And just notice how it's a little bit kinder on your shoulders because you came higher, put more weight into your legs. All well and good. Take the time and switch. And I'm including this just so that you recognize that do, do I prefer this height, right? But when we wanna minimize any wobble effect, we want to go back to a low block. You may decide you don't need the block at all. We're gonna to go to plank and then to downward facing dog. And so I'm gonna use a low set of blocks just to show where we're going next. We're gonna take the time to come into plank. And if this is too much for anyone, then please put your shins back at the floor. Consider putting your forearms at your blocks. And we have lots of options. From this plank to a downward facing dog gives us a chance to have a rest actually. Roll the shoulders open, look back to your feet. Notice that you didn't change the placement of your feet relative to the position of your hands. 
And where I'd like for us to go with this is a leaning forward, rolling forward, and then coming back. So if you will, lift your head and look ahead and lift high onto your toes, come maybe halfway forward and round in your back. Think about what we did in cat pose. So this is flexion, this is strength work, this is core engagement, and then go back to your downward facing dog. Straight lines, rolling the shoulders open, reaching into the heels of the hands. We're gonna do that two more times. Rise up onto your toes, maybe come a third of the way forward, still come into flexion, still invite cat pose into your body. We wanna strengthen flexion so that flexion doesn't get us into trouble. And then come on back, we're going back to straight lines. And if we become really strong and know ourselves and downward facing dog, then it truly eventually becomes a resting place. Rise high into your toes, come slightly forward, maybe 30 degrees round, round, round in the back. And then this time, if you will, lift your head and look ahead, come back into a straight spine, step one leg forward, doesn't matter which leg. And I wanna give us the time to use the blanket again. So come on down and park the shin. And if what is better for you is to stay off your knee, then please do that. But I'm going to go from here to using medium height blocks. All right. And as I get to medium height blocks, where I'm trying to get us to is to this really great lunge. This is hip opening. And will play between a pushing and a pulling action. So at first I want my feet to push away from each other. I wanna press the front foot forward and the back shin back and just notice how the lower body responds to that. Where I'd like us to spend more time is to draw the foot toward the knee, so to pull. And if you're not on your knee, if you are at your back leg, whether it's anchored or on your toes, I'm asking that you pull the front leg toward the back leg. Right? The cinching up action that gets our attention. If we want hamstrings that give us more access for mobility, we have to strengthen them too. All right, before we get to the other side, as you relax just a bit, let's take our blocks to a tall height and put them on the inside so they're together and they will not wobble. Hopefully they will not. And I just wanna check out and notice if we were to bring our forearms to the blocks and keep this lunging action, whether we are at our knee or not, how this is a deeper hip opening. Would everybody agree that this is more, yes? Okay, so don't make it more than it needs to be. I gave us the use of the tall blocks to keep it kind, but to keep the aim of hip opening. We'll get to a little bit more all in good time. Drop the shin, come on up, turn your blocks so they are low, so they're not gonna wobble, and then take the time and switch. We're not being fancy. Here comes the other leg. And I want to come into this great lunge, meaning I move my foot forward and it is hip opening. So now I'm turning my blocks to their medium height and playing between, oh, but my legs are gonna push away from each other. And we're gonna spend a few breaths and notice what that is like, give time to that strengthening pattern. This lends itself to some of what we do in standing poses. So we have to be ready for these actions. And in the near future, if you will now pull the legs toward each other, then we will make use of this pulling action that really does get our attention. It's easy to be here and to hold our breath. And so I'm reminding myself as well, everybody breathe, okay? Where we went with that is to ask for that little bit more. And each side is different. So if what makes things better for you is to lift the knee, please, again, be true to yourself. I'm taking these blocks, I'm making them tall, I'm putting them to the inside, and I'm coming down to the forearms. And what happens here, what I'm really asking for is more of this front of the hip opening. There is more action involved if the back knee is lifted. And that doesn't mean that this is um, a place where we are demoted by any means. This is a lot of active stretching. 
as we become familiar with what we can do in lunging practices like this, we can concentrate on the front knee and the front and the arm beside it and resist them to each other. There's always that next place for the mind's eye. Now we're going to turn the blocks to their medium height. And as you keep that same leg in front, if you will lift the back knee, I want us to turn the back foot out and anchor it. And we're gonna take the time to take the blocks toward the inside, as if I want it to walk over to the other side, we're gonna get there. But before we get there, let's, while we're down here, take the time to move the blanket out of the way. And whether you use blocks or not, this is a place that's sort of in between a downward facing dog and a lunge. And just push with your feet, push with your hands. Take the time and come to center and center your feet in an, a symmetrical way. What I really want us to do is to turn the feet so they are more parallel to each other and to the outer edges of the mat. So you can take a look to the outer edges of the mat, see what happens, let your hands press forward, let your sitting bones press up and back, lengthen the front spine, look ahead and just breathe. How far away your feet are from each other becomes unique to you, the willingness of your body to take on this wide pyramid style pose. And then we're gonna keep on. We're gonna go over to the other side. That means that other foot needs to turn out now, yeah? And I'm gonna bend in that knee. And again, we've arrived in this place that's sort of in between uh, a lunge and a downward facing dog. Stay here and breathe. It's easy to round in the back. We're aiming to extend the front spine. These are pushing actions. So now we're gonna to come to center. We're going to take a break and come more upright and then we're gonna come right back to it. So if you will, turn your feet out, bend in your knees a little bit, bring your hands to knees bent and keep this place for just a little bit. And just notice your comfort zone with how low am I? How far are my knees allowing me to bend? Am I keeping this lengthening of the inner line of the body? And bring yourself more upright without necessarily straightening the knees so much. Give yourself a challenge. Take the arms wide, come into this goal post position and draw back. Right? So this is a goddess pose. And then if you will, straighten the legs and take the arms up like in a Y position. Great. As you take the arms behind you, we're gonna fold again, but let's talk about what the arms are going to do this time. At first, take the arms behind you any amount. My hands are clasped. If your hands don't comfortably clasp together, not important, you could hold the strap to help that along. But as you hold the arms away from the back body, as we engage that back line, if you will go back to making your feet parallel to each other, okay? And then keeping a micro bend of your knees, you're going to fold a little bit. And as you feel more comfortable using a focal point ahead of you, come into a deeper fold. Before we go terribly deep, just notice that we can lift the arms possibly a little bit higher and that's because different accessory muscles are participating at this angle against gravity. It's a nice surprise. Over time, this becomes a place where we come down and rest the head with this tiny bit of weight, but we're not gonna do that today. This is a preparation towards that end. I want you to really look at your feet, outer edges of the feet parallel to the outer edges of the mat, front spine lengthening, and just give yourself a chance to experience maybe a few inches more. Keep looking slightly ahead. Give the back of your neck that strengthening pattern. Where can the arms go? And then release the hands. Sometimes we add a twist to this pose today. We're gonna to go back toward that first leg. So if you will, move your blocks back, turn that original front leg out, bend in the knee, bring your blocks over that front foot, 
We did this on the other side, but we need to do that here now. Turn your block slow and step back into your plank. And this time, rock forward and back in a plank position. So we are rocking forward, pulling back. The toes get us to this. The core is engaged slightly. We are refining how we're asking for strengthening of the wrist. And we're not staying anywhere too long. We'll do that one more time. And then we're going to sneak into upward facing dog, meaning that we're going to just drop the hips a little bit. We're going to bend the elbows a little bit. We're going to pull the rib cage forward and just look up. As you exhale, come into your downward facing dog. And I hope you notice that, oh, wow, this really is more of a resting position compared to where I just was. And today we're going to step forward. Uh, Quite often, uh, some of you have built up this understanding of hopping forward. You are welcome to do that. But as you step forward, put your hands at your shins, press down and back, extend and look ahead. And this is a nice transition to keep the hamstrings long and really to strengthen the back. So if you will, take the arms wide and then take the arms back and lean slightly forward. Take the arms wide and just feel how the hamstrings turn on more if you're not allowing yourself to lean back so readily, but that leaning slightly forward with a light bend over your knees really opens up the hamstrings. We're gonna unfold and fold from this position just to strengthen the back line. So inhale, come up right, drop the elbows. Yep. And then we're gonna go again. So we're gonna keep that light bend of the knees. We're gonna be mindful of not hanging back so much as you fold down, reach the fingertips wide. It's not important how low you go. I'm trying to get to that place where maybe my back is parallel to the floor and then charge the legs and inhale and come on up and drop the elbows. And it's rather interesting, something this simple can be so specific and useful. All right, one more time. Reach wide, reach down to reach wide, reach out through the crown of the head, root the inner heels. And then inhale and come upright. This time, drop the elbows. Think about that figurehead position of your body. Lift the sternum, take the arms away. And that's a nice balance. So we're gonna do something really simple. We haven't done this in a while. And it will lend to how we get around in this world. I want you to step one foot in front of the other so that you have maybe this walking the tightrope position and maybe you have a foot between your feet. So you don't have a whole lot of room between your feet. It's not a terribly wide uh, base, All right? So I'm trying to get to this walking the tightrope position and all I want you to do is shift your weight into the front foot and then shift your weight into the back foot. And what happens is that the pelvis tilts, right? It tilts from one side to the other. And what I think might happen is that it challenges our balance just a little bit, right? This is such a simple place. If you like this so much or you understand its value, you can practice it any day. It's very safe. It affects proprioception. We naturally are going to look somewhere on the horizon and use a focal point to, to help ourselves balance. You can be more specific and notice that when you look down, balancing is easier. You get to ignore movement around you and the peripheral vision. When you look up, it's a little bit more challenging, but there's another reason why. We spend most of our time looking down and orienting by a focal point that is down. And to look up makes us have to rely on this inherent sense of where we are in space. All right, so now switch. When we get to do this really simple preparation, it works on articulation of how we use the legs for stability and grounding. It might feel a little different on this side. So I'm just shifting my weight from that front foot to the back foot, the hips shift. Yeah, and we want that. We want them to be that fluid, that mobile. Does everyone notice how one side is easier than the other? Maybe.
And so this happens with every step that we take. We heel strike and then toe off, and we initiate from how we use ground forces, and then what happens up the chain all the way into the spine becomes part of our unique gait pattern. And where we are tight feeds into how we move ourselves forward. So we, we wanna start with the capacity to be really fluid in all of these joint structures. Okay, enough, very good, let's switch. And let's put the other leg in front and take on a warrior one. So I have my front knee bent and my back leg straight and this really great um, grounded pose that is not walking the tightrope. At first, if you will, take the arms back and lift your gaze and feel strong in your legs, bear into them. And I want you to notice the amount of back bend that you have right here, right now. Try to hold it. Try to square the pelvis with the direction of the front foot. Pull your legs toward each other. You might not like that, it'll feel big. But then take the arms all the way up and try to be really still in your spine. And then take the arms down and back and try to get to that place that was a little bit of a challenge, meaning that you took your arms away from your body. If you will, drop your hands so you'll know, oh, this is how far away I had a little bit of distance, right? Okay. Keeping your legs still, fold halfway. Right, so we're not over lunging in the knee. And where I want us to notice, again, is that the arms can go higher, okay? So take the arms forward and just reach forward. Enjoy this lengthening of the torso that the arms allow you. And when you back, whether or not you clasp them together, try to get to that slightly higher place, okay? While you keep the legs firm, can we straighten the front leg? And can we keep the pelvis square? We can do that with a little bit more action now. So now you may find that your body gives you permission to fold deeper. And this is your opportunity, okay? So how high can your arms go? Think about that. Take the arms, swing them down and forward this time, down and forward. And while your blocks are ahead of you, if you get to them, push. Push, push, bring your weight to the inner edges of the feet, take the load off the front leg. Firm the legs, inhale, keep looking slightly ahead and take the arms behind you. This is a good set of preparations. This is conditioning, this is awareness building. And as you inhale, bend in the front knee. Continue the inhale, come slowly upright. Continue the inhale, take the arms all the way up. And this time, if you will, simply turn the palms back and open. And step the feet together. So we're using our legs in a great way that they were designed and that's for stability. So now everybody knows what to do. Let's do the other side. We won't be fancy getting there. Other leg is forward. And we're not walking the tightrope. And the idea is to pull the legs toward each other and take the arms down and back. So what I didn't cue was how far away are your legs? Just give yourself a comfortable stance. Maybe because of what we did on the other side, there's a little bit more freedom in the rib cage. Taking the arms out to the side and around and up any amount. All the while, the legs pulling toward each other. Taking the arms down and back, trying to arrive at that same place further away from the back body. Keeping the legs still and steady in their action and coming into a fold. So I want to fold maybe halfway. And then put your mind on your foundation. Keep the legs pulling. Take the arms high. Any amount. Take the arms ahead. Okay. 
You may find that to stay steady, all of a sudden you change back into that pushing rather than the pulling action, and that's just fine. And then if you will, take the arms back again, this time as you arrive, straightening the legs. And just feel what happens. You can square your hips more readily. Your fold may be deeper now. The arms may travel higher now. This is you on your mat. This is just about you. As you exhale, let the arms drop and swing them down and through. If you find your mat, use it. If you find your blocks, use them, push. Find what you can do. Take the load off the legs a little bit, especially off the front leg. Bring the weight to the inner edges of the feet. Feel how that refines the squaring process. And that there's a lot going on here. So to ask you to return in the reverse is a tall order right here from the legs. Take the arms down and back. There's a lot of weight in that front leg. Take the arms away from your back body. Inhale, come halfway up. Mm -hmm. Bend in the front knee, feel what's different. Decide if what you can do is go back to that pulling with the legs action. That's a lot. And then continue the inhale, come the rest of the way up. Continue the inhale, take the arms high. Turn the palms back and open. We are accentuating that back bend. And as you bring the hands together to your heart, step the feet together. That was a lot of action. We're gonna work our way back to the floor now. I'm gonna turn this way and we're gonna take advantage of the um, blocks when we get there. So at first, if you will, come into this chair-like position. While you're here, I want you to think about how low you are. I'm not trying to get anyone to um, overdo, but let's take the arms out of it for just a little bit. Just think about where you are relative to the floor and can you be really still in your upper body and move just from your ankles? Can I lift and lower my heels and not bob up and down? Can I load the legs a little bit more? So now that we've fatigued the legs just a little bit, I just want you to notice your neck stays neutral. You're trying to shift the sitting bones back. It's easy to lean in. I'm trying to keep my shins uh, perpendicular to the floor, but I want you to notice your habit. Do you turn out in your ankles more readily? Can you keep your range smaller so you can stay in control of neutral? So we strengthen neutral and we arrive safely at progression. Straighten the legs, continue to fold, use your blocks please put your hands at your blocks adjust as you need and nothing fancy we're going to step back to our plank and we're going to come into our downward facing dog and then we're going to make an adjustment roll the shoulders open at first lift your head and look ahead and come and bend in the knees and come into a deep squat so where I'd like you to go with this is to consider using the floor and not your blocks. Let's just slowly back up and deepen the squat. At first, if you'll come forward again in your weight and simply swivel, turn your knees to one side, turn your knees in the other direction. It doesn't matter which side, but I want you now to I uh, use one of those positions to come down. Okay. So I have my blanket on top of this block and it goes behind me. And if what you decide that you want more is to have two blocks, if you feel like you want more stability, you can put the blocks side by side and put the blanket. I'm gonna sit on one, it's low and it's wide and um, we're going to travel into this wonderful twist named for a sage. And as you find your way to your block and your blanket, we are sitting higher than we typically would sit. So this is an improvised form of that pose. 
one leg is going to swing out to the side and the other leg can drop to the front. And the blanket is not under my legs. It's just this block is under my sitting bones. And so for those of you on the screen, I just want you to know that we've done this pose before from here. And we said, oh, from sitting with our feet together, we turned one foot out. And I'm having us make it much easier today for a reason. First of all, I think everyone should find this accessible. And secondly, I want to bring attention to that turned out leg. All right, we are all different in our body. And this turned out leg is aiming to practice hero pose. Over time, we want to guide it back and we want to tuck the toes back close. The top of the foot is at the floor and on the block, it might make it accessible. Yeah. So in this pose, Baharad Vajasana, we are turning away from our feet. And what we can do here is take the hand that comes across the midline and it can maybe catch the thigh. But the other hand is going to use the corner of the block. And we're gonna even improvise what is more traditional. We want to tell this front hand, what is it gonna do more in the future? And we're going to lean in. What happens in this front hand is actually that it wants to turn away, palm up, and we want to reach into the heel of the hand. So it'll be different than, than the weight bearing we've had. It will open up the wrist. I want to take the hand to the outer knee, but I'm going to turn so the folks on the screen can see a little bit better. Today in this elevation, I want us to come and put our hand down fingertips back towards you and take the other hand to its pushing position. And if that's too much, that's what the second block is for. It's to give you a chance to not put a whole lot of weight in the one that's turned fingertips back towards you. So in, in the future, this hand that is turned fingertips back is going to come and hide underneath that bent knee and we're going to be more in an upright position and it's all about lengthening the inner line of the arms the inside what i want us to be careful about is not putting too much weight when we're not ready for it we have to stretch before we strengthen we can strengthen along the way no overdoing all right enough come on up take the time and switch it's nice to try something new and something that gets us safely to where we are going. At this elevation, one leg rests across comfortably as if legs were crossed. The other tucks beside us, behind us, the toes come back and we're turning away from the feet. And if you stayed upright, you can use the back hand, catching the corner, catching the other block, fingertips at the floor, any of that. But if you are ready, lean in that direction, let the fingertips come back towards you and consider using the second block so that arm can bear more weight and you can stretch the inner wrist. Some folks will find that this is too much and they want to put their forearm down instead. Any of that works, any of that works. If you notice what that hand that it's turned back towards you is really doing, um, you can appreciate how your fingertips are the kickstand, right? You can press into the fingertips and they make adjustment. Whenever we do anything like handstands, our inversions that require us to build wrist strength, our fingers are the kickstand. But if we don't have the mobility in the wrist, that short changes us. All right, wonderful, and come on back. We get to come off of this and traction and settle down now. So nothing fancy, come on down. And if you want to reserve your blanket for your, um, for your head, if you need it underneath your head, we're going toward the floor. Make sure your blocks are nearby you. And if you will, sit with knees bent and arms ahead. Okay. So at first we're gonna drop back. We're gonna drop back and really think about how this is a preparation for boat pose. And 
abdominal wall is working. This is a little bit of core work. And then inhale and come on up. Can we lift one leg? And then can we lift the other and really think about boat pose? We loosened up a lot of muscles. Can we straighten one leg? And then straighten the other leg. You can alternate again, or you can aim to straighten both legs, any of that. And place them back down, reach ahead and come on to that challenging place. Now that you know it, come another inch, drop back one inch. Inhale and come on up. And whether you turn to the side or you just draw back this way, we're gonna slowly come down and we're gonna make it all the way down. So take your time. This is about you. Try to slow down that last one fourth of the way. This is called half boat pose. And then take the arms overhead, flex the feet strongly, reach the fingertips far away from the inner heels. We wanna to continue to open as we settle in. So if you will take your blocks and place them so that they are underneath the upper thighs, really close to your sitting bones. Your pelvis is still on the floor. Glutes are on the floor and then arms beside you. Before we drape the legs, if you'll come into your bridge, center your head, reach the arms down, invite the neck to lengthen. Notice how you are uh, with your ankles, not uh, rolling the weight out, but more toward the inner edge, inner edges of the feet. And as you come down one vertebra at a time, drape the legs over, bear down with your legs again, reach into the inner heels, draw the toes back towards you. We're gonna take three breaths here while the pelvis is lifted off the floor, while the heels are off the floor and taking the arms overhead. Inhale, exhale, swing the arms toward the ceiling, reaching actively down beside us. Keeping the legs charged and the body lifted, inhale, lift the arms. This begins to tug away at the relationships of that deep psoas muscle and how it needs to be long and strong so the lower back is resilient. Take the arms toward the ceiling. Keep reaching into the inner heels, keep drawing the toes back towards you. Reach down towards your heels with your fingertips. And one last time, please, inhaling. So with these repetitions, you can feel the constant adjustment of all the relationships. This is refining, empowering, balancing, and then releasing. As you rest the arms, this time rest your legs. And close your eyes if you wish, if that helps you to settle down more. Turn your palms up if that allows you to give away anything more. Bend your elbows and rest your fingertips, your hands at your belly if that feels more as if you are protecting your energy. Bring your mind's eye to the fall and rise of the belly. Allow the awareness to radiate to all the corners of the body. Feel the integration.
and use your awareness to allow a continued release. And in that space, invite what you anticipate and welcome into your year. What would that be? It can be many things. But for today, continue your deep breathing, slow and easy. With that in mind, what are you inviting? Bring your knees to your chest and roll to one side. Allow your body to settle in here. And when you're ready, press up and sit. Since your blocks are nearby, consider sitting with a little bit of height. I'm going to put mine together. And I'm going to sit at my blocks. So we began with the focus on the now, and we ended with a focus on inviting something into the future that we carry what we practice from our mat with us. And I hope that manifests in ways that have a beautiful, positive ripple effect for you. Namaste.